Hi, welcome back. Um, we are now going to continue our tour of GIMP. More, more specifically, our, uh, our photo color fix, restoration, or whatever you want to call it, uh, part two. Last part we covered um, uh, the histogram, which is very important. But this we're going to uh, cover something that's a little bit more abstract, but is probably one of the most important things that you will learn in photo retouch, and that's the um, the concept of curves. Most people find it's very, very intimidating, but actually when we go through this, you're going to find it's not. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our curves dialog. First of all, if you'll notice this image, um, the, the um, uh, shadow detail here needs a little bit more shadow detail, and the highlights need to be a little bit darker. So we need to be a little bit lighter in our shadows, and a little bit darker in our highlights. Usually the reverse is true, but let's talk about this curve, for example, that's right here. It's actually a straight line at the moment, but it will turn into a curve. Um, if you were a 35 millimeter uh, or a film camera buff like I was for many, many years, uh, what you'll remember is when you took that film out of the packet, uh, there was a piece of paper that came with it that had an S-shaped curve on it, on a chart, which everybody ignored. But actually those were the, the tonal response of that film or the characteristic of that film. So what you would see is you would see an S-shaped curve that looked very much like this. Actually not as extreme. But what that basically was, was how the film would respond to the mid-range, the shadows, and the highlights. So we'll reset this. Basically the eye um, is incredible. Um, it's got an extremely wide tonal range. In addition to that, it can, if you're looking at something, um, the tonal range is going to adjust in your brain and your eye and the iris is going to close so that you Actually, it's, it's like um, having a camera that adjusts on the fly. So, but the cameras have a much narrower tonal range than the eye does. So what we have to do is in the retouching area of uh, photography, what we have to do is we have to get in and uh, modify the tonal range so that we're seeing what we saw and um, not what the camera is dealing with. So now, that made sense. Tonal ranges are like an expense account. You have so much money you can spend and you either spend that on the mid-range, on the highlights, or on the shadows. Or you've got to, if you increase the contrast in one area, you've got to reduce the contrast in another area. Um, so you've only got so much contrast available in the image. So what you have to do is you have to work with the curves. If you take the histogram, the histogram um, allows you to do things overall. It's got a uh, the left hand slider allows you to enter to adjust for your um, shadows. The right hand allows you to adjust for your um, for your mid range or for your for your highlights. And the slider in the center is your gamma or the actual um, modification of the curve of how it applies overall. If you've only been dealing with the um, the uh, uh, contrast and brightness curves in GIMP, you're stealing from yourself because those modify the entire range but they don't particularly pay any attention to one particular range. Now if we take a look at this real quick, you see this straight line. The significance in this is <coughs> If you notice, down here is your input range, and out here is your output range. This is what's coming in. This is what's coming out of after your retouch operations. If you'll notice that in this particular instance, okay, we have a roughly a 65 to a 65 where this meets. That means this tone at 65 is going to map exactly to this tone at 65, which is basically the same thing. Now, if I take this, and if I say, okay, I want to take this point right here, and I want to map this tone, 
which is a 49, I want to map it to a, or, or this tone right here, which is a 47, I want to map it to a 74. If you notice, my highlight, or my, or my shadows got quite a bit lighter. So we'll take it back, and if you'll notice, the shadows are back to black again. Now this is called an anchor point. To take these off, all you have to do is drag them off the screen. Okay, but what we're going to do is we're going to increase um, this this highlight, or I mean this uh, shadow area down here, and we're also going to increase the highlight area. So we're going to put a couple anchor points right here, and we're going to put another point up here, anchor point. And now what we can do is we can move these. So if I move this one ever up so slightly, if you'll notice, I gain shadow detail. That's because I'm mapping this black to a slightly higher value. And then here, what we're going to do is we're going to map this to a slightly lower value. And as you will see, um, what happens is our sky got darker. Uh, we can even do a little bit more. Okay. Actually, um, we should come down to about here. So we can now map that down a little bit more. Now if you'll notice, our sky has gotten darker and our shadows have gotten lighter. By mapping this value here, okay, to which is right here, to a much lower gray level right here. So we're mapping this level to this level. Okay, so if that made sense. Normally what you're going to see is you're going to see an S-shaped relationship where it's like this, where we're going to lighten our, or our highlights and darken our shadows. Now what you will see is you will see that. The reason being is what happens is the eye is more, more sensitive to the mid-range tones. So if you have contrast in your mid-range tones, it's going to be more acceptable, acceptable to the eye. It's going to make a pleasing, more pleasing photograph. So here we have lightened our highlights and we have darkened our shadows. And this right here is our mid-range, which remains pretty much uh, not affected as much. But so what you've got right here is this slope. The higher the slope, you're going to see the more the contrast. The less of the slope, you're going to see less contrast. So if you take, for example, here, if we reverse those, what you're going to see is you're going to see lighter midtones, and you're going to see more highlight, and you're going to see more highlights in your shadows, or lighter shadows. You're going to see a, uh, let's see, this is going to equate to a darker highlight. So that is the reverse. Here, we'll just reset this to save time. So, remember, these two points across here equate, and as you see right here, you've got this handy dandy counter that says, that right there says how your X, which is down here, is mapping to your Y. Your X is your input, your Y is your output. This is dealing with contrast. In the next, we're in the next section, we'll deal with uh, uh, changing the uh, the color values, which is the other three parts of this curve. Okay, well, thank you for watching. We've dealt with curves and contrast. In the uh, next video, we will deal with uh, color changes. Thank you.